All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining. We got Mike Steen here. He owns the Mike Way up in the state of Washington. Mike, how long have you been training now? Personal training now, buddy. Personal training, 10 years, brick and mortar for six. Brick and mortar for six, 10 years training. Awesome. And then we've got Dustin Keith up in Lee Summit. And Dustin, go ahead and Dustin's on the bodybuilding team. He's on Team BHAF. He's also helping me with For the Lions um, here in 2023. And Dustin, go ahead and give them a little bit of background because you're probably the, the newest person here on the podcast. We've had Mr. Mike on before. Yeah, no, I've been in uh, sports and everything my whole entire life, lifting, doing everything there. Um, a full instructor in Jeet Kune Do with martial arts and doing that. Um, I was in the military for 10 years doing everything there. Um, and then actually I started taking everything serious as far as lifting and doing everything probably a couple of years ago. And then a friend of mine, which is uh, Matt Downing, he knew us. So I recommended, I asked him for a coach and he said, yeah, Skylar's the guy to go to. So I went ahead and got with Skylar and I've been with him ever since. Yeah, it's been awesome. It's been awesome. We're looking forward to a, a great year with you and Matt. I'm super excited. I've been trying to get Matt for a while because he's such a, uh, got so much potential in the sport, just like yourself. And Mike, Mike was on the team and Mike, Mike may make a comeback here, but we've got some personal training that we're really diving into here 2023. And that's actually what brings us here together, men, is kind of going to dive in a little bit of people going into 2023 or the new year and them chasing their goals or everybody has their new year's resolution and we all kind of have different perspectives and stuff and so that's what i wanted to start to dive into today is just about some of the things that um you need to think about when you're setting your goals when you're getting ready for the new year and if you're going to be serious um, enough to stick with it and so let's go ahead since dustin you might have been the first personal trainer out of all of us buddy when did you start you did do some personal training and and how long did you do it and when was it again well i was a head instructor at uh elite defense systems which is a jeet kune do school so a self-defense school in chicago so mm -hmm. i was there for probably five six years i want to say somewhere in there so i ran the school was a head instructor there underneath matt numeric so did everything there uh I've had little odds and ends things with, you know, people, just family members and stuff like that. Nothing like you guys. So I'm not at your guys' level yet. I'm trying to learn to be like you guys. But uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. Just doing the same thing, just being, you know, in the gym, lifting and, and doing everything there. So. Well, being the first trainer out of the three of us, what would be your advice on people's approach towards their 2023 goals and New Year's resolution in the New Year's resolutionist crowd? Anytime you're going to have a goal, you have to make it in baby steps. So you have to break it down. So you have to make it in steps that are attainable because a lot of people want to reach for the sky just right off the bat. So they want to say, I want to go and I want to lose 50 pounds in like two weeks. Well, that's not really attainable. So you got to do it in baby steps and something that's attainable and you got to do something that's actually judgmental. So whenever you're sitting there and you can say, OK, I want to lose 10 pounds in two weeks. Well, can I really do that? And how do I do that? Then you back it out. So then you start saying, okay, so now that I've got this, how do I do that? What do I actually do to accomplish that, to make that goal happen? 100%. And that's one thing that we do in uh, Ready to Win, where me and Mike are coaching um, with our online services, is that we always set up SMART goals. Just like Dustin was saying, you got to be specific. It's got to be measurable, right? It's got to be attainable. It's got to be realistic. And then you got to have a timetable on it. And so that's where when people have these unrealistic goals, sometimes that's what kicks them out of the fight, right? That kicks them out of the journey with their fitness because they they hit that first hurdle because they've set an, an unrealistic expectation for themselves. So that's a huge one. That's a huge one. And then once they do that, then they can't stick with it because they've hit that hurdle. And when they hit that hurdle mentally, yeah. they can't get over that. So then it just becomes yeah. too tough and they hit the next one. And then it just becomes really tough and it starts snowballing. And that way, once you actually do the other effect, where you make little baby steps and you actually make things that are attainable and you start reaching little small goals, then it makes the opposite effect. It starts snowballing in the right way. Oh, for sure. 100%. And that psychological factor behind training is huge. I mean, there's sports psychologists for athletes. You know, Mike being in personal training for a decade, me being in for, I think I'm going on 11th or 12th year right now. And I can tell you right now, general population with the weight loss and getting the physiques they want and getting the confidence they want you know that's one thing um that they kind of lack sometimes will be exactly what you're saying finding those goals setting those goals being realistic with themselves and then when they don't obtain them they just 
completely fall off the wagon and just say, well, I can't do it. So why should I even try it? Right. That's one of the biggest things I've seen is like, Hey, I've set this up. I haven't been able to hit this goal. So what, why the fuck am I even doing it anymore? Right. Or it's, it's even happened guys where I've had somebody where their batteries were bad in their scale. So they'd actually lost like fucking 10 pounds, but it said they'd only lost two. So they said, fuck it, and ate like shit. And then when they got their batteries updated because it completely died, then they're like, oh, God, I still, I lost like eight pounds. And they're like, I probably lost more, but I was eating like – and they even told me, quoting them, hey, I was eating like shit because I, I was like, what's the point? I've already been doing this and following this. In reality, they had lost that weight. So that shows you how strong that psychological aspect is, um, and especially with that general population because they'll be either full go, like the beginning of the year, or they're going to be out. What's, what's something that you tell your clients, Mike, when they come into you and they have these New Year's goals? What's what's something you tell them with their approach to achieving these goals um, at the at the very at the very start? I mean, obviously, you know, like Dustin said, it's obviously going to come down to having your goals in line. I think for me, the most important part, um, even if you don't have a trainer, finding some system of accountability, because we have a terrible time holding ourselves accountable we'll set some shit up and not really follow through on it because it's us because we're expecting of us so for me you have to either be really impeccable with your word or once again you have to find some system you have to find a friend you have to find a buddy you have to find something that holds you accountable so you're not rationalizing hitting the snooze button when you should be doing cardio or you're not <laughs> rationalizing um eating fast food because you didn't prep your food you know what i mean so for me i think it's going to be finding a level a system of accountability that really pulls you you know what i mean that really calls you out on your bullshit. because i i, mm -hmm. I really think people having we, we have a a self-empathy button for self that allows us to be okay with shit that we probably wouldn't be okay with other people you know what i'm saying so <clears throat> for me even when i started my journey I think the thing that allowed me to be successful in the beginning was the the accountability I had for myself that if I said I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. So I try to preach that to my clients. I'm 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 gonna meet you wherever you are, but I need you to hold yourself accountable. I need you to be transparent with me. That's that's where it's at. You know what I mean? Because we mm -hmm. can lie. I mean, you can lie to everybody, but you can't lie to yourself. So, like I said, I think a system of accountability is probably the most important part because. The more you show up, the more you're going to be accountable, the easier your goal is going to be to achieve. So it just kind of, you know what I mean? Like you said, it's that, that snowball effect, but in a, in a positive way. Oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, the, the motivation, the accountability aspect, um, and then just having structure, uh, an actual structure and routine so that you, if, if you have shit that you're just doing and it's getting you results, that's amazing. But if you get a certified strength and conditioning coach if you get a personal trainer if you get somebody that actually knows what they're doing now you get to work smarter not harder and you know that's really the goal a lot of people aren't like us where we like to go in the gym for the mental toughness and the and the and the struggle and and to push ourselves some people just want to go in to stay healthy some people just want to go in to, to to check mark that for the day and so if you can be more efficient and and more uh, intelligent with your program design and how you're doing stuff, you'll get way more out of it without having to work so fucking hard. You know, I see guys yes. at the gym all the time where I'm like, you are working really hard and not getting any goddamn results. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yep. son of a bitch, as hard as you work, because I mean, I, I bust my ass in the gym, but I see some guys that are there longer than me working hard, but they're, they're science, no science. So no so that, no structure, that, no accountability. That accountability thing right there. Like, yeah, I'm gonna go to the gym every day. But when I leave the gym, don't give a fuck what I put in my body. Don't care what yeah. I drink. Don't care how I manage my stress. I mean, the, the list is ridiculous for the things that people trade a good workout for. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like I said, you go in here and you kill yourself for an hour, two hours, three hours. And then the other 21 hours, you don't even remember what you did at the gym. Yeah, uh, man. Yeah. Well, that's that yeah. thing too, Mike. You know, you gotta yes. have that discipline to actually be held, hold yourself accountable and do that. That's the thing is to do the small steps, do the things that really suck. And when right. you do that, you know that they suck and you know you gotta do them. So just go ahead and do them and have that discipline to actually have the motivation to do. But I think we're in a world, man, where people think they can have their cake and eat it too. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, like you said, <laughs> man, they, they gonna kick ass in the weight room. He see yeah. dudes in there working as hard as he is, if not harder, but 
the mm. results that they're bringing are minimal because once again they're failing to manage their stress uh they can't stop going to happy hour they can't stop staying up late like i said the small things that they are okay doing because they work so hard they don't have the same place you cannot put them in the same basket and be like I'm going to take results out of that basket. It's going to be results every time I, you know what I mean? Every time I go, once again, you worked hard and you, you, you've gotten the gains you think you're going to receive. And then you null and void them by failing to recover, failing to foam roll, failing to like, for me, I'm, I'm thinking I'm getting gains. And it wasn't until I started to schedule a massage every two weeks that my body actually started to respond to the hard work. So, you know what I'm saying? You have to have a system that's in place for your body. You know what I mean? I think people have been pulled in so much by the next big thing or the next fast fix, the next appeal. You know what I mean? Right. You don't really get an opportunity to understand what we've understood for so long. I mean, obviously being an athlete has helped us create the discipline and the accountability but the science part of it that we are taking the time to learn now i mean the gains we see now are even ridiculous compared to you know what i mean like i tell people i've always been strong but the body i have now at almost 40 yeah uh, it's ridiculous and you know what i'm saying so <laughs> we we want to help people learn you know what i mean like you 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 can't really say i'm gonna go into this and i'm gonna get away from the, um, my new year's resolution is gonna last. I, I think the number of people who actually can complete it is what, like 6%. Oh yeah. It might be like three even. It might oh be God. Even lower than Damn. That. Damn. I was well, the, the biggest thing, <laughs> biggest thing too, is like <clears throat> what Mike's saying and what Mike's kind of teetering on is like adherence. Me and Dustin talked about it. We talk about it with bodybuilding because you get so many old school coaches where you got to do this 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 and this well if you can't do this 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 and this then how are you going to really stick to it how are you going to sustain those goals how are you going to maintain um whatever you just achieved you know and so that's where with training and with nutrition it has to be something that you can adhere to over a long period of time for them to be sustainable type of goals for you to to, to keep and so that just like you were saying um mike is is when you don't have a uh, a, a professional or fitness professional sometimes that can 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 hinder you um if you don't do your own research and there's so much crap out there i mean we all know it guys there's so much bro science and bull crap out there uh it's one of the few things that i do utilize a ton from graduate school is reading studies and some people don't understand like okay the study says this but the target group was this big or they did it this many years ago, or it's not cross referenced with multiple, multiple, multiple studies of the same thing, you know, or, Hey, this is a great study. Like the one with the carbs making us fat. They didn't, they didn't make the carb group and the uncarb groups calories match. So how can you say that it was the carbs when the calories were actually higher in the, in the, uh, carb group than it was in the uncarb group. So once they, once they did more studies and they matched the calories and the high carb, low fat, high fat, low carb, they've matched. They lost the same amount of weight, uh, lost the same amount of body fat, nothing changed. And and they now people will still will still try to coach, um, you know, the old school way because of that study. And they've, they've failed to see like, hey, this variable that they tried to hold constant is they didn't do it. They didn't hold the calories constant. They didn't match them. So now that can't, that is not reliable information or uh, the insulin response from, storing body fat okay well how if, if in fact when we release insulin we store body fat did you know that when you eat enough protein you release insulin so then why are the people that are eating all this protein not getting fat okay it's calorie balance it's energy balance again right and so that's where you get so much of this crap out there so i even tell people like with our group mike and and dustin our six week stuff is like hey come in get an education you don't want to pay fucking eight hundred dollars to go to nasm you want to pay fucking six hundred dollars to go take ISSA? No, come pay a hundred, two hundred dollars. Learn from over fucking Brumley has twenty years experience. Dustin's on here helping us out. He's been doing it for a long time. He did it for six years. We've got twenty years between the two of us, Steen. So you're getting a, a very educated, experienced staff. And most of the time, it's like you were saying, Mike. We we want to educate you, so we want to teach it what, what is it you catch a fish for a man you feed him for a day you teach a man how to fish you feed him for a lifetime and that's what we're trying to do is like hey you get through the six weeks you like me or mike's energy 
you you like working with Dustin. Okay, cool. Stay on. We'll keep coaching you. But our real goal is, and I've always told people my mantra with personal training is like school education. I want to take you from elementary school to high school to college to grad school to doctorate. And then after that, what am I doing except just trying to hold on to you because I want to keep your money, right? That's what trainers do, Mike. You know that. And so they're, they're, they're scared to let their people leave. Don't teach them too much. You don't want them to go off on their own. But they, hell yeah, that's what you want them to do. They didn't say in high school, don't teach them subtraction so he can't pass. We want to keep them here in high school the whole time. So that's where I tell people, get yourself a coach that cares. Get yourself somebody. I mean, there's so many people, guys, that coach with trainers and i hear what they tell me and i'm like red flag red flag like oh we only do functional stuff we don't do deadlift we do blah 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 like i'm just like red fucking flag that's a quack he's just trying to keep you for your money he don't really know what he's talking about now if your body and your training needs to do that because of injuries or things like that that's different but that's one thing that i think is huge is like get yourself uh, uh, uh an infrastructure that you can sustain and you can adhere to and if it happens to stay with these coaches great but if you know you want to do it on your own make sure you get yourself a program that you know you can take the knowledge from i've talked to people mike we started ready to win two years ago i talked to people from two years ago where they still use our coaching but they haven't been in the program for two years and they've maintained their amazing physiques one kid I went to high school with never had abs and he still does. He lost more weight after the program and his abs look even better now than when they, when he was in the program. And so I tell people that's our goal is to give you that nugget, give you that tool in your tool belt so that you can go down and maybe fuck, maybe you teach some people that stuff, you know, like I said, I, I tell people, man, if you stick with me, you know what I mean? Long enough, you'll be able to train yourself because I want to educate you on a process. I want to educate you on cardio and why we do it. I want to educate you on food and why we do it. I want to educate you on heavy lifting versus, you know what I mean, anaerobic versus aerobic. I mean, like mm -hmm. I said, if I could teach you that, then you can maintain a lifestyle that I've given you. Um, yeah. I think like in my, I have a, I have a lady, man, we did some crazy numbers in a short amount of time. I mean, it was almost, uh, I still check to make sure it was something that we done because it was such a crazy number. You know what I mean? Yeah. But we were able to cut the calories when we needed to. We were able to cut the carbs when we needed to. We were able to add the carbs. We were able to add the fats. But what we didn't do was put her in a depleted state. What we didn't do was put her in a state to feel burnt out. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I, I think people yeah. develop a way in they just make it one way you know what i'm saying each body type is going to be sure. different each attitude towards what you're saying is going to be different so i think one of the things where we you know what i mean for ready to win we pull people in we allow them to pick the system that works for them and then coach them through that system you know what yes, i'm saying 100 so 100 i think you have to you have to find someone who's willing to meet you where you are and then bring mm -hmm. you to where you want to be versus where they want to be. So with that too, with the same thing as is with the diets, with a lot of people, they have a certain way that they feel that they have to do. What they're doing is, is they don't know that they're putting themselves on a deficit. So when they're putting themselves on a deficit, it just, whatever way is sustainable to them that they like and they could sustain. If they like keto, take keto. If they like carb loading, like carb loading, then do carb loading. But the thing is, is what it works for them and what they like and what they can sustain, that's the big kicker. Yes. Yes, but I don't think people know enough science behind past what you just said. Like people would be like, "Yeah, I'm about to do keto," and then that's it. You yep. know what I'm saying? Like I don't know what's going after that. Yep. I just know I'm gonna eat fat. You know what I mean? So that's 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 the I think that's the fad thing that like the Atkins diet. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. just it was so many different things that'll continue to come up. Like you said, you have to find what works for you, and that may not be a high carb. That may not be you know what I mean a low right. carb. That may not be just all fat. So like you said, just finding a system that's maintainable. <laughs> well, let me let me let me put this in here real quick. I've planned this out. I'm on a rest day. <laughs> We're podcasting. I'm having a couple beers. I'm off of work for the day. I'm putting them into my fitness pal. They'll go into my caloric intake, and then I can. I tell people, people, you don't, you never take anything out. And if you get to a program that says you can't do this, you can't do that. Don't drink. I mean, if they say like, hey, let's challenge yourself. Let's see if we can not have a drink when you go over this. time. That's different. But if you get to a program that says like you guys were just saying, you got to eat keto. We talked about a guy that me and Dustin know. He really pre preaches this vegan and vegetarian stuff. And uh, funny thing is, that's the fucker that was eating steak with me. And then he's preaching vegetarian and veganism and all that. But he was tr trying to get it across. He's like, that's how I got results. So that's how you can get results. But in reality, it's 
you lowered your calories, you know, and, and he talked about it a little bit, but he still had his agenda with that stuff. And so it's almost like you guys were saying keto works well with you. Your, your body feels good on it. Cool. Let's let's roll with that. Then if that's what you can adhere to and stick with Dustin and me just talked about it the other night. I used to do more of a keto type diet when I started bodybuilding. Excuse me. I feel very low energy with my training start to run out of energy on cardio and so i switched to more of a high carb diet still dropped body fat still got top seven in mr universe in my class still you know what i'm saying and i had high carb diets at these times so it is again where the literature and the science is pointing to that energy expenditure and that energy intake and so you're finding that these calories now when people are like oh you know don't put it all on calories well yeah you can't that's just the first step of it but i think that's a huge thing when i when i look at people's programs or somebody tells me about a program they're doing not even trying to be a dick just trying to just trying to kind of peel back the layers of the onion to see what the program's about i ask them hey are you are you doing calories are you are you moving macros around carb timing carb cycling usually it's no no with all of it they give me some food list to eat off of they give me some generic cookie cutter fucking thing, you know, and, and then the thing we know with about energy balance is your body will adapt. So that's where, yeah, the cookie cutter thing might work for now, but you really need to get somebody like you were saying, Steen, that understands the science that's going to meet you halfway. Cause if you, if you get some of these coaches, Dustin, I'll, I'll send you some of the coaches on Instagram. There's some coaches where if you eat a chicken breast and they told you to eat white fish, they will almost fucking kick you off the team. Like there's some crazy, latin lady down here in miami that she has a ton of great athletes but she rips their ass all the time and i always tell sam i was like it's so funny to me because if they're eating the same amount of calories the same amount of protein it is literally no difference it, the, the body doesn't care but for her she's causing all this shit with her athletes now she rules them with an iron fist and they do really good and it works for her but the science isn't pointing on her side so that's where i even tell people like hey if you can do that like these athletes can great but most general population as we know guys they can't do that they can't do that stuff they have trouble me and dustin were just talking about how we have to talk about measuring some of them won't even measure with the scale so you have to talk about different methods of doing that and everything now what what do you guys feel like some of the biggest mistakes are i won't even say new year's anymore just the biggest mistakes in fitness or mistakes that you've made we've all made mistakes we've been training a long time we probably made them all between the three of us what are some of the mistakes that you see um let's say with general population and possibly with athletes and things like that. One of the big things is, is, is that I've already been through is like whenever you have that myth that you have to be in the gym 24 seven. So you have to spend hours upon hours in the gym and just beat yourself to death. That was one of my main mistakes whenever I was young. I didn't yeah. realize that whenever I was going through everything and once I started getting more educated and everything, but that was one of the first things I would, the more I did, the more I thought I was in a game. And, yeah. and that's one of the key things. And it was also the same thing with like I've wrestled since I was in second grade, you know, back in Maryville, Scott. Not you're a couple years younger than me, but still with Drake and all those guys. But the same thing was was, you know, we would we would cut whenever we would cut or do whatever. I mean, it was just like you would just stop eating. So I would lose muscle yeah. mass, lose weight, and I would lose everything else. So I could always Energy. Yeah. Well that and that's that's one of the things that I, I will say, especially with uh coaching physique athletes the last five years uh you'll see them where maybe they mess up on their diet or they eat too many calories so then they just crash the next day and like mm -hmm. dustin said the negative behind that is if we could look at it from the perspective is like hey i'm gonna bring it down let's say you went over 500 calories okay over the next 10 days lower your calories 50 calories for the next 10 days 50 calories lower it'll match up and you're going to even out and everything is going to be awesome but if you just drop it boom and even it out in that one day span yeah, it might be good for your weight and your body fat, but you now are running the risk of losing lean body mass at a faster rate than you would if you were doing a more of a gradual decline with your weight loss and with your body fat. And I think that's a huge thing with New Year's resolution people, not not even that we were talking about them, but that's one huge thing where they get in, I've ate like shit. I mean, shit, what is it guys? Uh, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> The, mm -hmm. And, and yeah. if, you're, if you're like me, there's birthdays in there and stuff, you know, and so they eat like such crap that they think, oh, I'm just going to starve myself here and it's going to fix everything. And again, that's not like what we were talking about. That's not going to be an adherable, sustainable type of program or, or type of diet to stay on. And that's why they ultimately fail with that. Um, training wise, what do you guys see some of the biggest mistakes maybe with like program design? What do you see with program design with, with, um, I, I mean, we can say new year's to people or just people getting started or just people in the gym. 
Um, but what do you think some of the biggest mistakes people make in their training regimens? I see a lot of people just kind of coming in and feeling like I'm going to move the same weight or I'm going to move at the same pace I moved two years ago, three years ago, five, however long ago mm -hmm. it was. You know what I mean? I can remember when I started my journey after gaining the weight, I went at it like a football player. And it really mm -hmm. was like a, a real slap in the face that that shit was not working. I'm like, dog, what? I used to, you know what I mean? Power clean, push jerk, bench, squat, blah, blah, blah. I'm doing all of that. And my my body composition ain't really changing. I mean, my neck is getting thick and shit, but I ain't really, you know what I'm saying? Like my waist is not going down, et cetera. So that's what kind of pushed me into trying to figure out the food game. And that's once I, the food game just completely pulled me in. Like once I under, once once I got that understanding of food and how important it was to control different energies, what you gain, how much output, you know what I mean? Like once I started to understand mm -hmm. that, that's when I fell in love with fitness. Cause before that, I mean it was just throwing weights around. <laughs> yeah, 100 percent Well, Dustin, what are some of the mistakes that you see since you've been out of coaching for a while and you're kind of in the gym? And you're able to because Mike's got his own studio, but he also trains at a local gym. So I and so do I. And so we see people in the general uh, population gyms and stuff. But what do you see in some of these membership gyms, maybe of some of these young men and women? What do you see mistakes that they're making? Because you're obviously very educated in this aspect of, of training. So what do you see in the gyms when you're there? A lot of it's just the same thing. A lot of it is just the like Mike said, they're training really hard, but they're not doing the diet. So they want to go in there and they want to beat themselves up, but they're tearing their muscles down, but they're not recovering or they're not putting the nutrition first. They're not doing anything else. So they're not getting the results that they want. That's the training stuff that I really see is just that they come in and like you said before, they look like the same that they have ever when they started, you know, six weeks ago, mm -hmm. the same as what they do now. A lot of the other ones is, is to me, whenever I see a lot of the things is the kids, they see the new fad. And when they see the new fad, which we've already talked about, but that's what they do. So a lot of them with the bands, yeah. they see bands or they see chains or they see all this other stuff. I mean, it looks good on YouTube and it looks good on the Internet, but it's not anything that they really need to do yet. They haven't even done the basics yet to move up. Then they're starting to do the advanced stuff because they see somebody on Facebook or YouTube or whatever doing that. And that's the mm -hmm. thing I see is one of the biggest things out in the general pop that a lot of people are doing. Yeah, I, I, I was going to kind of piggyback that. I, I think <clears throat> people are compromising form. People are compromising mm -hmm. joints. Like you are seeing mm -hmm. major injuries early in their program because, like he said, they're doing shit that they seen somebody do on the Internet with no concept mm -hmm. of what it takes to actually complete that movement without jeopardizing a joint or, you know what I mean, something like that. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that that people are hurt and – like I had a lady, man, she came and she was like, you know, I'm really interested in training with you. Da, 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 da. And she had her daughter with her and her daughter comes in and she's on crutches and she got her shit. Like, you know what I mean? Her shit's like one of those big long ass braces. Like, you know what I mean? And I'm, looking yeah. like, I'm looking like, God damn, what did you do? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She was like, uh, I was, I was doing CrossFit and I did a box jump and I was like, damn, that came from a box jump. It wasn't the yeah. box jump that done that. It was some of the compound exercises that she was doing in the program early, jeopardizing yeah. her knees so that when she did do the jump and made that force, the knee completely blew out. And I'm like, are you are you serious? Like, God damn, you blew your knee out just because of some crazy exercises and then somebody not being able to instruct you how to pro properly do a box jump. So. Once again, yeah. programming, doing the small things right in the beginning so that you can elevate without injury. Oh, 100%. One of my big pet peeves with box jumps is they're meant for plyometrics. So, and we've probably all done it, but they're meant for you to jump, boom, land on it. You have If you jump on a real tall box, you have a medium box, you have a small box, and you walk to the ground. So you jump up, and then you walk down. Or... You jump up, you jump off, and then you jump up in the air, right? You're learning how to land. You're doing different things like that. When I start to see, like, these overweight people, boom, 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 boom. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Because, all, first of all, what is the risk-reward? The only benefit to having the box is it kind of looks cool. Other than that, you're jumping on the box. You you can fall and get fucked up. You can fucking miss the box. You could tear your knee. You could bash your face in. 
Why not just have you jump and pull your knees to your chest? Why not just do a vertical jump and not land on the box? Because you're still getting the fucking same height. You're still getting the same fucking landing. And guess what? Now there's almost a 0% chance of god dang injury. But no, we want to jump on a box. Like There was this huge obese lady that was jumping on a box and everybody was resharing it. And I said, it is super cool to see her do that. But my God, if she fell right after that, that would have been the most malpractice thing I've ever seen because... A, there was nobody on the side spotting her. B, is that girl could have just been doing jer- vertical jumps and gotten every same thing benefit from that exercise other than landing on the box, which, I, other, like I said, that's a lot of negatives and not a lot of positives. There's really no positive to it. She, she's not a fucking football player working on jumping jump cuts. She's not, you know what I'm saying? So and now if you want to do it because they want to do it, put them on a box. But this lady was morbidly obese, and she's somebody that shouldn't have been um, jumping on boxes. Uh, another story I have is uh, uh, manager. Uh, when I became manager at any time, one of the trainers who got demoted from ma- manager was training this lady with cerebral palsy. She walked on uh, with a walker. She could barely get up. There had been a time where she was on the ground. And we had to lift her up off the ground because she, you know, she had her disease. And then she also just didn't have very much muscle and she had a lot of body fat. And this crazy motherfucker puts her on the treadmill, boys. Puts her on the treadmill. And she's freaking just, I, now, at this time, I was not a manager yet, but this was right before I got there. I met Lori. I'm like, God dang, Lori, what happened? What happened? And she had fucking road rash, dude. So somebody that you should never put on it. Now, I will say this. By the time I got done training her after about one calendar year, we were able to do the treadmill very slowly. I had to be right beside her holding her. And... uh but we had built up enough strength from doing different exercises to get her on that. This guy puts her on there and then he's talking to some chick and then all of a sudden uh, she falls. They didn't slap the off button or pull the fucking uh, safety cord. They just tried to lift her up. So they're picking her up, putting her down, just fucking bashing her face into it, dude. So that's where I tell people is like, Hey, these exciting, cool things you see online. Yeah. There's a great, they're a great goal to shoot for, but if you're not ready, and you don't know if you're ready, get with somebody that can coach you through if you're ready. Just like Dustin. Dustin's coming to me to coach with bodybuilding, just like you did, Steen, so that we can say, hey, you're ready to go on stage. We can go up there and give our best effort, just like the coaches did for us in football. That's when they would move us around in that practice during the week because they're making their evaluations. Same thing with the training. I told she was really heartbroken that she thought she'd never be able to walk on the treadmill again because that was her one of her, like, Wise of, of why she was training. I want to be able to right. ride on the treadmill, you know? and so we had to strengthen her triceps. We had to strengthen her core. We had to get her legs strong enough. So we did all these things for about a year. And the last couple of weeks that I was training her, we were able to do like five minutes, very slow, having her hold herself up. But when he, when you have these trainers or these people that push you too quickly, there sometimes you got to be careful too with this day and age with the recording and the content age that they're trying to say like hey look what i did with this fucking person in this amount of time they're not really thinking of the individual and, and like saying hey maybe we should take it a little bit slower maybe we should approach this a little bit slower and then get to the box jumps and that you know don't do box jumps when the lady's 300 pounds maybe get her down 50 75 pounds throw some box jumps in there when she's ready because the only I thing mean, I even I even to the non even to the non-athletic people though brody like this chick wasn't big that's what i'm saying mm-hmm. to you when i seen when i seen the knee i'm like yeah you had to do something serious like i was like what sport you play you know what i'm saying and like, it, it was yeah. no sport it was it was literally the mechanics it was probably yeah. bad squatting habits it was probably yeah you know what I'm oh, saying? Like I said, sure. there's a lot of compound movements in CrossFit that if you don't have an athletic background, you don't have a good core or a good base, then you could potentially run your joints. Your joints ain't never been through no shit like that. Oh, so, you know what I'm sure. saying? So you go from that to doing those compound exercises at a crazy timed rate, and then I'm going to have you do box jumps afterwards. So like I said, I, I don't think it's confined to that. It's really knowing your body, your capabilities. You know what I'm saying? So skinny big whatever it is if if you ain't if at, at you know what i mean at athletics oh, wasn't your sure. thing <laughs> if you didn't grow up playing those sports for more than five years if you didn't go to you know what i'm saying next the next level on certain things then you're probably not ready to do next level shit. <laughs> you know what i'm saying like yeah. you really have to to pay attention to that because you'll trick yourself by comparing yourself yeah. to the shit that's on the internet and now you fucked up for a few months <laughs> And now you can't do anything and you're even worse. 
Yeah. Yep. Yep. And and CrossFit, one of my biggest pet peeves with CrossFit is uh Dustin's from Maryville like myself, Mike. And so fuck, we started hang cleans, dude, when we were twelve years old. I remember doing yes. hang cleans when I was twelve. I, I I my record still is at Missouri Southern. I hang cleaned three I think it was three eighty or three eighty five. And uh so it's still a defensive back record. And so the thing that blew my mind is like, okay, I've done these movements since I was in in uh middle school, fifth grade. And you have these general population people. I remember I was dating a girl when I first moved down here and she lived about an hour away and uh she was doing CrossFit. And I told her, I was like, come train with me for for like a couple months. Let me teach you how to actually do these Olympic movements, and then you can go into CrossFit. Because sometimes CrossFit, the sad thing is they will have good program design, but if you don't have a good coach at your box, what they call a box, their gym, then sometimes you're gonna miss things like Mike said. Maybe they have some need some knee adduction on their squat. Maybe, maybe they have, uh, you know, one of the biggest things with CrossFit for me is think about it guys. When you Olympic lift as an elite Olympic lifter or power lift as an elite power lifter, how many times are you going heavy ass weight, not resting and then going right into heavy ass weight again? How many times are you doing that? Ever. You're not doing it ever. I mean, think about it, right? I mean, we might do some high rep stuff, but then what do you get after? I mean, think about it, Dustin. When we were in Maryville and you got done, you were lifting with two or three other guys. So they had to rotate through. So that's a natural what? One to two minute, three. Yeah. So one of the things I love, I used to love doing this. I actually co coached a guy that made it within one, one uh, round of the CrossFit games. And I always love to give him a hard time because I told him, I was like, you realize you're not really doing like, strength training right i was like you realize you're doing like a sport like crossfit is now a sport it's an endurance sport with power lifting and olympic lifting and and all this other fucking shit that they throw in there but i said it's 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 its own thing now i said you're not you're not doing strength training he's like yeah we do we do heavy weight for low reps i said okay how long do you rest he's like well and i said you fuckers because they'll do the heavy weight you guys seen this in the competitions they'll do the weight and then they got to change the weight themselves <laughs> then do it do the next heavier weight so it's really again an endurance based movement olympic lifting is for power and explosion so it's meant to be done one two three five times you want to start to get into some endurance for for olympic lifts and power lifts 10 12 reps some volume 10 12 reps you're not doing 20 reps of this shit, you know unless it's a lightweight barbell complex for just endurance which again is lightweight so if i clean 380 I might do a barbell complex with 135. I mean, what is that? It's fucking like 20. I mean, I don't even want to do the math because I'll look more like a moron here. Yeah, 380 to 135, we're roughly a third, right? So we're, we're way down there. And that's the thing that I would tell people with CrossFit is like, you guys do amazing workouts and you do amazing movements and you, you do have some good program design. But the rest time that you guys allow yourself fucks all of this stuff that you're trying to do. You can never be as strong and powerful as you want when you're not taking long rest time. Even hypertrophy now, guys, is found to be two to three minutes. It's no longer chasing just the pump, like they used to say. You can chase the pump. That's one way to get a hypertrophic response in your body, and they do see more uh, muscle being built that way. So, so does more volume. So if I could only do 100 pounds, but then if I waited 30 seconds, I could only do 75 pounds, but if I took a minute off i could do 100 pounds again i'm creating more volume so i'm going to grow more and so that's 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 some of these things that you know there's there is just so much crap information out there too that it's like i said mike we got to go like shake i get offended sometimes when people don't want to coach with us because i'm like you guys are listening to some of this instagram or geez the TikToks or stuff like that i'm just like oh and, and, and you just need you, if you had somebody that actually knew because like I told uh, Dustin, like you only have so much time in this life. Dustin is turning what? Dustin, 48, 49? Uh, 44. 44? Yeah. 40, oh my God, I'm putting on a ton of years of you here. That's Jeez. Master, man. <laughs> well, I was going to say, you, you you look my age, buddy. So, I mean, you look good. You look good. But mm -hmm. the thing is, what I was telling him, you don't want to take chances on coaches that you know you can't trust because you do have, it's like with football, Steve. We're grandpas in football. We couldn't lace them up if we wanted to. Like 30s, 40s is we're too late with football. So you, you got to make sure that you get with somebody that even if you like them and if they're not getting you what you need, you just got to make sure that you keep yourself uh, in the in the main scope of things. 
And that's one thing that where, uh, you know, me and Dustin mesh really well because Dustin doesn't need a coach, but he's humble enough to realize that there is people that he can learn more from. And that's one of the things that I think these New Year's people and these general population people could take is like, hey, I get you might know a lot, but you don't know as much as my buddy Mike. You don't know as much as my buddy Dustin. So if you get with them and you sponge up some of that knowledge, you're just going to benefit yourself. Who, who's some good coaches that you've had, Dustin, over the years? And who's some good coaches that you've had, Mike, over the years that have made a big impact, whether it's athletics or, or strength coaches? You know, mm. hopefully, Dustin, I make that list for you one day. And same thing with you, no, Mike. Dustin, I know you coach Dustin's together. not on that one, so that's fine. So <laughs> I know. I've not made that. I've not made the cut yet. <laughs> yeah. No, hey, uh, hey, I'm putting you yeah. on there over Papa Giorgio any day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's probably, in all honesty, the best one would probably be Coach Dre, without a question, mm -hmm. bar none. So, from wrestling since I was in second grade, I was never, you know, the all state wrestler or the best guy out there or anything else. But that was the thing was it was just working and working your ass off. And he always had the work ethic yeah. that you got at the gym, you busted your ass, and you got out. You didn't sit there and spend hours because if you spend hours, you what are you doing? I mean, you're not mm -hmm. doing what you're doing. If you're spending two or three hours in the gym working out, you're not doing okay. This yeah. is the discipline and this he's not where it needs to be. Yeah, you know with Drake. Yeah. I mean, that was just with Coach Drake, the way that he had everything, he held you accountable and you had to do the little stuff. The same thing with Luters. So with football, I mean, mm -hmm. it was the same thing. Uh, one of the Clarence Green, you know, Dr. Green, he's now the uh, president, inner president there yep. at North. He was, uh, I think he was an assistant. He was a coach for us on a line out there whenever we were in high school. Very nice. Loved him. I mean, we, we sat there. We did everything. Every time I come back, I always see Clarence. We go and do everything. But he, that's the type of thing is whenever you can see those people outside of the sport, then you know that they made a good impact on your life. Yes. So it's mm -hmm. not necessarily the sport. It's not necessarily the lifting. It's not necessarily what you're doing. It's the impact that they have and what they teach you. It's the work ethic. It's the mental toughness. It's it's the little thing. It's the discipline. That's the thing that's really going to adhere to you and actually stick with you to make you do this stuff later. Um, that's probably the, the biggest thing. Now, as far as obviously with martial arts, you know, there's so many to name. Tell Mike real quick um, your connection. I mean, th this guy's a bad man. <laughs> Dustin is a no, bad no, man. No, 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 no. You, you didn't. Let's, you didn't see me. You didn't see me smiling when he said that. When he said that, no, you, I was like, "Oh yeah, I, I was smiling." Like, yeah, but, oh, no. Uh, how, uh, tell him how far. Is. Tell him how. Uh, tell him how far under Bruce Lee your teaching is, though, because that's oh, fucking. Yeah, yeah, that's I pretty. Mean, that's pretty fucking cool. I'm, I'm like, I, see, the thing is, my instructor Matt Numerick, he's a full instructor underneath Paul Vunek. Paul Vunek's the one that taught the seals. So he was out there and he trained the seals and did everything in Jeet Kune Do. So. He now runs a school because he sold his school. And now he's a full instructor in Krav Maga. So now he teaches out in Arizona in Krav. So that's where my instructor is with him. I ran one of his schools in Chicago for a couple of years out there. Um, we're going to have Nick, one of my really good friends. He's like a brother to me. He's going to be on here later. Uh, he's actually, he progressed and stayed on there because he and I were the two head instructors at the time. He stayed in that world. I got out. I'm an accountant now. So I'm a controller. Now, as far as that goes, Roy Harris, I've done private lessons with him, too. He was a top guy underneath Paul. So Roy has his own thing where he goes out now and does international stuff under Roy Harris International. And uh, he actually is one of the top guys in BJJ and everything else and all that stuff. And we used to do private lessons with him. And he is one of those most influential guys, just the same thing. So it's not even just in the JKD world, but he is such a great person and such a right. great and everything that he's taught you and done everything outside of that and taught you to take that and apply it to your life. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. I think for me, man, um, uh, I had some good coaches all the way through, man, but I was blessed to, to have some, some really amazing high school coaches, man. Like I mm -hmm. squatted 500 before I left high school. The work ethic that they had instilled in us, man, was ridiculous. I, I mean, to this day, there's not a lot of physical things that I see that I can't wrap my mind around and be able to get through. Um, they really preached education. Like, my coaches wasn't just PE coaches. Like, these cats was like algebra teachers, biology teachers, you know what I'm saying, and shit like that. So you mm -hmm. really got an opportunity to, like, pick their brain, and it wasn't just about football. Like, 
I mean, I, I think um, the most influential would have been my head coach, uh, Wild Bill Stubbs, man. He was, hey, he looked like the old coach from Miami, the dude who had the, the mustache. He looked <laughs> just yeah. like him, carried himself <laughs> like that, bro. He out there in, like, the Dockers with the no socks and shit, bro, Oakley's on. Hey, but let shit go south. <laughs> let yeah, shit go yeah. south. Let let you not hear what he was saying. Like he was a, mm -hmm. uh, he was always a man of his words. So his players, he he commanded that respect. Like, bro, no shoes on in the weight room. All of the helmets had to be facing towards the field. Oh, if damn. your helmet wasn't facing the field, you couldn't play. You feel what I'm saying? Like it's so mm -hmm. much shit like that, bro. That till this day, I still live like that. Like. I got to make sure my bed is made when I wake up in the morning. I got to make sure that when I go out, I conduct myself like a respectable man. Like I command respect. You know what I mean? Like I, I think those guys really gave me an opportunity to be myself without judgment. Are we all coming from a different background? Blah, 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 blah. They, they met me where I was and forced me to grow. I mean, I might have quit, man. I might have quit like seven or eight times my freshman year in high school just because they were, they were on my ass. Like, I, hey, dog, you don't, you don't talk to me like that. You know what I mean? I fucking quit. You know what I mean? I had a terrible attitude, a single parent household. So for them to show that patience, understanding, and mold me into the man I am today, oh, my God, man. Like I said, I had coaches after that, man, and they done great things for me, taught me a lot of life lessons. But those guys, man, they had me peak early, man. I took that shit and I ran with it. Like, anytime it came down to – like I said, if I said I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that was that was the one thing that all of them, they instilled in us. I think one day, man, we were in there joking with one of them. And he was like, yeah, you young punk, y'all think da 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 He takes 315 off the bar and touches his nose with it and racks it again on the bench. Now, picture, you know what I'm saying, bro? We 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 barely getting to 225. This motherfucker takes 315, touches his nose, and puts it back on the rack. Okay. Yeah. You really are who yeah. you said you are. You really are who you said yeah. you are. So, back on. <laughs> that yep. part, you know what I mean? So, like I said, those guys, man, as a staff, man, and it was it was Salmon High School, bro, in Slidell, Louisiana. Like I said, these cats, man, they were way ahead of their time, man. Their understanding of, like I said, the latest, greatest information, what we should be doing and when we should be doing it. I can't really say, bro, that we were never, like, there wasn't a time that we weren't ever like we were physically outmatched. You know what I mean? And it mm -hmm. didn't matter if they were bigger than us. It didn't matter. None of that shit. When it came down to being physical. Oh, my God, bro. It was. So when I got to Benedictine, I'm not even going to lie to you, man. I, I really only stayed at Benedictine because I promised my mama a degree. But if I had yeah. I known the knowledge I know about like Juco and all of that shit. I should have got the fuck up out of there. Like, bro, I was stronger than my whole O line. I think I hit 475, like, yeah. Well, my 19 been, times or some shit. Like, it was crazy, bro. <laughs> but, but not to mention that, though, bro, like, after my class left, it took a fucking, like, as far as leadership and, like, people actually oh, yeah. being somebody that you could, like, you know what I mean? Like, I, like, I not only, like, this is not only my brother in war, like, I fuck with him. If I seen him out, you know what I'm saying? Like, there wasn't a time we oh, see yeah. each other out where we wasn't going to catch each other up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, in, in oh, after my sure. class for left, sure. bro, that shit went down. Like, it was so much separation and this group and that clique. And, oh, man, I was like, bro, this, yeah. So they 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 went through yeah. a tough little transition after, like, the, after you left. I think he had, yeah. like, maybe three or four losing seasons before he actually started to get a culture that was – willing to put that work in, in like we were that had that dedication to the program. Yeah. Well, and uh, Joel Osborne is their head coach now, Dustin. He, uh, I played against him at Southern. He was at Northwest and I coached with him when I was in grad school and stuff. He's actually a good guy, real good guy. Um, but he had them at like top 10 NAI. He had them in top 10 in almost every offensive category, bro. He had brought the They, st uh, they still offense. there, bro. He almost won that shit yeah. again. He almost won it the yeah, year yeah, before. Yeah. Like he's, he's doing Yeah. He's doing a damn yeah. thing. Yeah. Well, that's that Northwest Missouri State coaching tree, dude. I mean, if his views uh, would have been in our time, God. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, it's, and it's not even that. That came. That comes from Adam Doral was his head coach, um, and then you know you look at teams like mine. My head coach didn't do great at Southern. We were like a five hundred team, 
but he's a offensive coordinator for Sam Houston State. They're in the fucking playoffs. My my defensive coordinator and defensive backs coach is a linebacker coach at Tulane. Tulane just beat USC. Right. You right. know, my other coach, Coach Day, was uh, um, an assistant coach uh for the buffalo bills for a couple seasons and stuff like that so that's the thing is you start to get these people where they come from that good culture and wilcox was good he's just old school bro that's it that's not a great coach yeah i said man yeah um principles and and character oh man one of the best people i've met you know what i'm saying i think i i remember the first time i heard him say character over talent i was like oh fuck, we about to lose every game did this motherfucker just say (laughs) did this motherfucker just say character over talent oh man hey mama this man don't know football (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. though i mean because the same thing it's that winning culture but it's the same thing is because it's the it's the from the high school up so matt webb when he's from the high school up I mean, Glitteris was right before him, you know, and everything else. So it was just that culture whenever you have it. And then, like you said, Skylar, your big dream and every, whenever you were with Luke and you guys were having that conversation was everybody's dream was to go from Maryville to Northwest. Well, and the reason yeah. being is because of the university is right there. And it's just that same culture just develops and it just breeds. Its, its oh, for that. sure. Well, that that's what they do down at Pitt State, bro, because I played at Southern. So uh, Joplin uh pittsburgh kansas we were 20 minutes before uh between each other bro but they take their kids and they run the same fucking offense see this is why pitt state is so good bro because pitt state will take their kids from web city as student taught at web city they will run the same offense that the college runs from phantom football like little little league football all the way up so that as soon as those local kids get ready they might not even be the most talented but they're plug and play it's players. a system it's a system it's a system, <laughs> it's a system. And, and check this out how many people from northwest are playing in the nfl not very many rod smith my buddy brandon i mean the thing is the system creates the culture creates the winning creates the and and that's where you know i've always taken my hat off to church my and doral I'm not a big fan of this right guy. Me and him had some 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 altercations when I was coaching because he was running his mouth about my team. But uh, and he hasn't been winning, so Maryville ain't too happy with him. But that's the thing is you start to you start to get this system and you get the right guys in the right system, right? It's like they talk with the NFL draft. You could draft the most talented guy, but is it the most talented guy that's going to fit into what you do? Because if he's the most talented, it doesn't fit what if you draft a four three D end and you run a three four. Maybe he can play outside linebacker, but he might not fit your system and it might not be a good pick. And so that's the one thing, you know, that's that's huge with that. Um, what have you noticed through your guys' coaching? Because you're both coaches yourself. What has been your most important thing that you try to give to your athletes, your clients when you're coaching them? For me, man, I created a little acronym, man, and um, so my whole my gym name is the Mike Way. So for me, my with my gym being the Mike Way, et cetera, I'm, I created an acronym. For me, you're gonna get motivation, you're gonna get intensity, you're gonna get knowledge, and you're gonna get effort. So it's the four things that I try to teach them. I try to make sure that when you go through my program, when you complete my program, you leave with motivation, intensity, knowledge, and effort. So I love it. I love it. Now, Dustin, over the years, what is what has been your biggest thing that you try to transfer over to your clients? The biggest the biggest thing for me is is the the informational stuff. So a lot of people they have the misinformation stuff that we've already discussed. So I keep learning from people like you, from Wayne Norton, from everybody else, from people that have a lot more knowledge than I do. And I continually, you know, thirst for knowledge to to teach them and give them. But I give them the tools, and like we also talked about, the tools and the discipline and everything else to not only take that, but to adjust it. So whenever they're going to run into those roadblocks, because they're going to hit them, and whenever they hit them, then they mm-hmm. know what to do and how what alternatives they have. And they can make their own choices without having just some script, because they looked at the bodybuilding blueprint, you know, or whatever, and then yeah. they saw some school of they would do three by fives, you know, or five by fives, or whatever, and that's they, they think that's their strength training. So with that, whenever you're doing that, and that's all that they know, you can assist that knowledge and being able to adapt that and being able to take that work ethic and know that it's just the small things and it's the discipline and having a good time. If we're all doing yeah. this because we want to have a good time. We want to look better and do everything else and everything else. Yeah, but it, there's so many benefits outside of that 
that a lot of people don't even hit on. So fitness and everything mm-hmm. else just makes you the endorphins hit, everything else goes, and you just have a good time. And whenever you're doing it, you enjoy it. You're gonna stick with it, and it's gonna be tough. Mm-hmm. But it's the discipline, and that's the main thing is just doing the baby steps and being able to break it down is the main thing too. Is because like we've already discussed, whenever you hit these big high goals and these lofty goals and you can't reach them because you don't know how to get there, show them how to get there and the baby steps to get there. Mm-hmm. Well, that's that's why I love, like we talked about earlier with the SMART goal is the reason behind a SMART goal is that you can look back and say, okay, you know, maybe my goal was to be the top bodybuilder in my show after 16 weeks of following my nutrition and training regimen, right? The reason we set it like that is because now we have a timeline. <laughs> Now, if I don't achieve that goal of being the best bodybuilder, maybe I look back and I say, hey, uh, it said 16 weeks and I really only followed 15, right? Or, hey, I, I, I said, I said, I'm going to follow the nutrition and the, the training plan. And I really kind of only followed the training. I was fucking around and, and slap ass and around with my nutrition and stuff. So you can look back and be like, hey, you could just like we talked earlier. Don't don't yeah. don't throw yourself off the bus just yet. The only reason you didn't achieve it is because we didn't do these couple of things right here. This is in the goal. We didn't we didn't do 12 weeks. We only did eight weeks. So don't beat yourself up because you didn't get it. You just didn't do the entire goal that you set. So give yourself another goal, right? Set another goal and let's see mm-hmm. if we can reach that or maybe make the goal more realistic or adjust it. And show them something that's attainable so that they can see the actual progress. Yeah. That they've made. So when they don't reach that goal, they see how far they've actually come. So they don't it's further mm-hmm. to go back than it is to keep going forward. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And when you start to get people to understand, uh, I mean, there's some, there's some awesome graphics that graphic we posted yesterday and appreciate you guys sharing it and everything, but to get 1% better, that's not even from one of the coaches that worked that I worked with. That was from a coach that was there before I went to Southern. It just had made such an impact on that team that they would say that all the time. And we carried it into the next line of coaches and stuff. And that's basically what it is. That's the truth about it. These small changes and adaptations in your life are going to lead to huge results in the grand scheme of things.